Do you believe Jesus is God or do you believe he was someone sent by God? And I believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. How can you follow something that's not mentioned in this your book of guidance? You cannot give something dogma that's not in your scripture. This is your source of guidance. Then it has to be in here. God wouldn't leave anything out of your book. Street, street power. We're gonna let you listen to two things. One is gonna be Arabic poetry. The other one is divine revelation from God. Can you spot the difference between what is revelation and what is poetry? I would say the second one. So why do you lean more towards the second one? It was, it was, he was like taking his time. He was really enjoying what he was saying. What do you know about the Quran? Well, I know Muhammad was a prophet and that he milked a dry goat um, and that we don't have the original copies of the Quran. I did some research into the Quran when I was in high school. I was really confused on what I was, uh, what I should believe because I wasn't, I was, I'm a Christian now. So like, okay. I, I was really looking for truth. And that's really what I think everyone should do is look for truth. And I really found it in the Bible. I never actually was able to read the Quran except for the paragraphs I read in school. Gotcha. I was not able to like read, read. The it. actual Quran, you never had a chance. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when you said that you were looking for the truth yes. and you said that you think you found the truth, I believe personally that the journey of seeking truth never ends. Would you agree? Wow. The journey of truth? Like you're always trying to find the truth. Oh, you might have it. You look for truth within the truth also. You're always digging. You're always uncovering. Yeah. Does that make sense? I agree. Yeah. So the Quran, just for some more information, for anyone over here as well too, the Quran was originally revealed in oral tradition, yes. right? So it was revealed to the archangel Gabriel. Okay. Familiar. Yes. And he was given to the prophet Muhammad, right? Mm -hmm. The Quran is the only scripture that is fully memorized cover to cover by millions of people. Wow. It's the most memorized book in the world. Okay, so even if we were to take the Quran and erase it all, throw them in the ocean, I get all the ink removed, the Quran could be back by the same evening because people have memorized. That's crazy. That's really, that's amazing. Yes, that's amazing. So it's been fully memorized. So when the Quran was being revealed, my friend, not only was it being memorized on the spots, yeah. but it was also being written by those who were literate because the Prophet Muhammad could not read or write. Yeah. Okay. So he could not write anything down. It was being revealed and those who could read or write would write things down as he's saying it. Okay. So when it comes to the collection of the scripture, the Quran and Islam within itself is the only scripture that was collected during the time of the Prophet. Okay. So at the time of Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, his the gospel started coming out a little bit later. Do you, does that make sense? Well, it was being chronicled um, while they were there and then it was compiled afterwards. Got does that it. make sense? Yes. Yeah. The Quran was compiled during the lifetime of the Prophet. Okay. So if there was any error, if there was anything that was wrong, it was being able to be fixed and sorted out then and there. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So are you guys helping build the largest mosque in the country of Norway? In this case, yes. I'm actually asking you, do you want to help build a Dawa center and masjid in Norway? If so, secure your Akhira by clicking the link below and donate literally whatever you can. Join me and Islamnet as we make history building a one-of-its-kind largest Dawa center and masjid in the country of Norway together. So secure your Akhira by donating right now, click the link, and let's make it happen. Dude, you, I'm super impressed. What's your name? SQ. SQ. Anthony, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well, Anthony, right? And as you know, Muslims already believe in Jesus. Peace and blessings. Yes. yes. And we believe that he was a messenger sent by God, right? And we do not believe that he attributed the things that people attributed to him much later on. So, Anthony, you mentioned that you never actually read the Quran. We were actually had a little gift for you, if you don't mind. It's actually an English copy of the Quran. Thank you so much. No problem. I really appreciate I, it. I hope that, not that you can convert or that you get some guidance from it, but you learn more because you're a very intriguing person and someone who's interested. So we just wanted to give you an opportunity to actually read it. I was literally this close to bringing my Bible. Do any of you have one? You guys walk around with Bibles? Is that your personal dream? This, you, guys, you, guys, you guys walk around with the Bible. Yeah. So what is it that you guys are doing? Oh my goodness, dude. In my experience, Jesus is actively in my life. Okay. In 2019, my father passed. Sorry to hear that. I, that's okay. I mean, it was a very difficult time for me. I, I was super depressed and I was really like thinking about doing a lot of stuff that I shouldn't. And I was praying and I said, Lord, if you want me, please speak right now. I okay. need something or someone right now. In that instance, in like, in me, I said, there it is. And then my phone starts ringing immediately. And my friend, Luke, who you guys know, Luke, uh, my, he called me and he goes, dude, I don't know why I feel like I need to be with you right now. I really feel like I need to be with you right now. The Lord answered my prayers right then and there. I was at a, a camp. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah.
they got. Absolutely. So let me tell you, my friend, what yeah. you're saying is absolutely true. It makes sense that when God want, when you call out to the Almighty, it is Him who helps the distressed. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Right? It is He who answers the prayers. Yes. Okay? Now, these types of feelings we've all had. I've had a similar feeling like this as well, too, where I feel like God answered my prayers. Yeah. Okay? And the beauty is this. We need to ask ourselves, are we seeking to worship God the Almighty by Himself or are we trying to worship Him through someone or something, right? Do you believe Jesus is God or do you believe He was someone sent by God? I believe he's, He was God. I believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, the Trinity. Yes. So the Trinity isn't explicitly mentioned in the Bible, but it all comes into place when Jesus is being baptized and the Holy Spirit comes down and then the voice of God says, this is my Son in whom I'm well pleased. So my friend yes. Anthony, you mentioned something very interesting. You said that the Trinity is not mentioned in the Bible. Yes. You gave me this book. Yes. Okay. This is supposed to have the guidance. Yes. How can you follow something that's not mentioned in this your book of guidance? So it is in, in reference to the three parts of God. So if you're saying it's not in here, where does that idea come from? So actually it originated with the philosopher Tertullian, but you don't have to, you don't have to like go into that. But what I, when I say it's not in there, it is in there. It doesn't say God is three in one. So, so here's yes. the thing, right? If I'm telling you it's something I'm speaking about yes. something, it's going to be in this book that I'm talking about. Awesome. If yes. you're going to tell me about the Trinity and how God mentioned the Trinity, he didn't mention it. It's not in here explicitly that God is three people in one. If you're saying that to me, as you said yourself, yes. okay, yes. then it has to come from this. If you're saying that this is your revelation, if this is your source of guidance, then it has to be in here. God wouldn't leave anything out of your book. Yes. Okay, so if it's not in here, you need to ask yourself, where did this innovation come from if it's not in your scripture? Okay, I, I, it is, so, so what I meant by that, um, that was, that was uh, I suppose, like a wrong way to say it. Okay. So it is in there. It was compiled by the philosopher Tertullian. Okay. Read the whole Bible and then saw the three characters of God and said that this is where, this is who he is. So do you follow Tertullian, the philosopher, or do you follow Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him? I think that, um, well, I mean, I follow Jesus to answer your question, but I think that over history, and I'm sure you would say this too, that there are very wise men who have interpreted... Oh, in scholars! Ways. Listen, yes. scholars are scholars, yes. but you cannot give something dogma that's not in your scripture. If you're saying Trinity in three parts into one, then it has to be in here explicitly, because we are simple people. Look, you're a much more intelligent person than I would be, okay? And if someone is intelligent, they can maybe make inferences like that. But God needs to make a book simple enough that it's clear cut. And in the Quran, we're taught that for those to warn those who say God is three parts, when God is only one. We believe Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, was sent by God to teach the people how God wants to be worshipped. So the people at the time, the, the, the priests, the reverends, and the, the, the ministers who were there, they were innovating in their faith, in their religion. Yeah. So God sent a mercy a son, not his son, right? But people interpreted the son to be like, that means it's Jesus. When Jesus was went to the temple and he had asked the people and he told the people, I and the Father are one. Are you familiar? Yes. With scripture, right? And upon hearing that, the Jews, right, they started to pelt him and stone him, correct? Yes. Now they pelted and stoned him, my friend Anthony, because they believe that he was blaspheming because he then asked them a clarification process that, hey, do you stone me for the good work that I do? They said, no, we stoned you because you blasphemed. What's the blasphemy? That I and the Father are one. He then clarified, he said, no, doesn't it say in your scripture that anyone who does the right works and the good works of God is the sons and daughters of God? And upon hearing this, the Jews stopped stoning him. So he clarified for them that when I say I and the Father are one, that does not mean that we are one in, in, in essence like that. It means anyone who's doing God's work are the sons and daughters of God. So from our understanding, we know that Jesus Christ, peace and blessings be upon him, will be returning if you're familiar with Islam as well too. We believe that in the second coming of Jesus, peace and blessings upon him, he will defeat the Antichrist. We believe in that entire thing. But we know Jesus to be a messenger of God who was sent to the people to teach them out of the darkness. When he was asked what was the most important in law, he said the law that thou Israel thou no God but me, right? But but the Father itself. So we have to remember some our understanding that Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, never claimed to have any of those divinity or anything like that. It was the people who attributed to him much later, like you said, the philosopher. People who attributed things to him that he himself never said. That's what that's the point that I'm um, I do believe that Jesus does reference and reference himself to be to be of God and so of yes, God. yes and so God. so God. if you yes. believe Anthony do you, if you're saying Jesus is God right God in the flesh 
Do you believe that God has the quality of being born? Can God be born? So he was incarnated, yes. So God, 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 right? Can God be born? God could do anything, right? So, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Right? What you're can saying. God be born? Is that one of his qualities? Can God be born? So, in this case, yes. Yes. Okay. So, in any other case, no. I mean, there was only one case, yes. Okay. So, this is the problem, right? From our understanding, this is where the differences come about. We believe that God has certain attributes and qualities, and God can do anything, but there's certain things that he doesn't do. You understand? Because it goes against God's qualities and characteristics. For example, God can't lie. Right? Yes. God can't lie. God, but God could do anything. But God doesn't lie because that goes against his natural disposition of who he is. Right? Not he as in a man. Because if, if one might say that God came in the form of a man, one might think, or feminist argument or anyone else with the, right, with the, with the mind who's critical about this could say, did God choose men over women? Why would God come in the form of a man over a woman? Has he preferred men over women, right? And that would be an idea because why would God come in the form of a man? Why didn't he pick a woman? And if he did come in the form of a man, why did he choose that skin color? Does that mean that skin color is more superior than someone else's skin color? What about that hair color? What about that eye color? When you attribute and say that God is an actual human being and physical person, now you're taking away from God's actual divine qualities and characteristics. Because if you're saying God came as a man, man Jesus is no it in the Bible to have eaten, correct? Yes. Then God is going to poop. Yeah. God is not going to use the bathroom. So He's I'm not going to pee. He's not going to have, you know, any type of physical urges. That's what I'm saying. Well, if it's a, de if it's a designed function of the human body, yes. then I think that it's not, like, sinful to poop. It's not. Of course it's not <laughs> sinful. It's not sinful to poop, Anthony. But God doesn't poop. <laughs> Does that make sense? God does not poop. I understand. Because God doesn't need to poop. Because God has no needs. I know it's kind of funny, but no, 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 God I'm has saying. no needs. No, but it's, it, it, it's funny. No, no, but, but that's the thing, right? the, It's that's funny right. because that's, that's, the, that's the exact quality, Anthony. Yeah. If you're saying that you're someone who sought truth and you want to know the truth, this is the conversation about truth. That's all it is. Yes. It's about us having a discourse between each other, Absolutely. Anthony, okay? I and, really appreciate it. No, I, and same here, Anthony. Yeah. My th our idea is this. When we say God in the Quran, and you can look at it yourself, in the, one of the shortest chapters of the Quran, one of them, right? In Surah Ikhlas, this, uh, it's called called the, cha the chapter of sincerity. It says, Qul huwallahu ahad. Say that God is one and alone. Allahu samad. He is not having any partners or anything like that. Lam yalid wa lam yulid. He doesn't have any needs. He doesn't have any desires of that nature. Walam yakullahu kufuman ahad. And there's nothing like unto him. To say that a human being who can make errors, who makes mistakes, who doesn't have all the knowledge because God should have all knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yes. When Jesus was asked about when is the day of judgment, he did not have an answer. Well, it was, he said, so, so the difference for that was, um, he said, you are no longer servants but friends because a servant does not know what his master is doing. And so in that instance, he was the, the disciples, they went from servants to friends. Does that make sense? Because okay. they knew their master's business. Jesus did, the disciples didn't. So he did know. It was, it was not for him to say to the disciples. So you're saying right now, Anthony, that Jesus knew when the day of judgment was, but he never told us? Yes. yes. Really? To the best of my knowledge, to the best okay. of my knowledge. Because when Jesus was asked about the day of judgment and when is the hour, right? Yes. He never answered that question because he said only the Father knows when the hour is. Yes. Okay? If he is God, he should have all knowledge. And he would have told the people when the hour is. Look, the day of judgment is very important. Yes. That's not a day to be played around with. Yes. You understand? When the Prophet Muhammad was asked about when the day of judgment was, he never said anything of, I know, but I'm not going to tell you. He asked us, what did you be prepared for it? When the Prophet was asked, when's the day of judgment? He said, what did you prepare for it? He does not have the answers of the day of judgment. Only Allah, the God Almighty, knows when the day of judgment is. So when Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him, was asked when the hour was, he said, only the Father has that knowledge. And that is within your scripture as well. So if he is truly God, yeah. it was upon him to not refer to him, the Father, as some other entity. It would have been to refer and say, oh, yeah, it's on such and such time. I don't think that was his... I, I, he shouldn't have shared. I think if it's like it's like it's like if I were to tell you um, the day of judgment, if I were to tell you yes. when you would die and you knew exactly when you would die, you would live life true very differently. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. But death is not the day of judgment. 
No, I understand. I'm just giving an example. To where that makes sense. If you knew a bookend to, yes. to your existence as you know it here on Earth, yes. then you would live very... You, you would live in anxiousness, and that's out of God's wisdom and mercy, right? That we don't know. And it's out of His wisdom and mercy that we don't know about the Day of Judgment either. Yes. Right? Because then we would be only doing our good deeds the day before the 11th hour. That's how human beings are, right? We would live our life in heedlessness and then we would actually try to like do good in the last hours and the last minutes, okay? Again, I appreciate the time that you spent with me, Anthony, for real, right? Yeah. And for, for in all honesty, Anthony, thank you for having this conversation. Totally. This is not designed so that, you know, I can, you know, to shake you up or, you know, put down. It's not designed for that I as well. I didn't feel like that at all. Okay, good. Yeah. It's, it's designed so that we have a better understanding because you said something about Islam and we just wanted to have a conversation about that, okay? Join me and IslamNet as we make history building a one-of-its-kind largest Dawah center and masjid in the country of Norway together. So secure your akhirah by donating right now. Click the link and let's make it happen. Could we pray for each other? Sure. Ahead, my friend. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity, God, for us to share in wondering about you and searching for truth, Lord. This is all beautiful and all good. And I pray for my brother, Lord, and I pray for these wonderful men who are searching and, and seeking and finding, Lord. And I pray for my friends and myself. Thank you, Lord, for revealing yourself to us. And I pray that you show us truth, God. And Father, for me, I thank you for Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross. Father, I thank you for giving me new life Father, I know the old me and I know how much I've changed. Father, I see myself broken and I see myself restored and I can't forget that. Thank you, Lord, for the truth that you've revealed to us. Lord, thank you for this time. Continue to provide us with opportunities, Lord. Thank you, God. In the precious and holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Oh Allah, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka Hamidum Majid. Allahumma barak ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka Hamidum Majid. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Oh Allah, indeed we are your servants and slaves, Allah. If indeed Anthony, your servant, your slave, is truly on the quest of seeking your guidance and truth and knowledge and wants to truly worship you and be guided to the truth, oh Allah, show him the right path. Path. Show him the way that is supposed to be the truth. Show him the path that Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, that he had chosen for him. Show him the path of Moses, peace and blessings be upon him. Show him the path of Abraham, peace and blessings be upon him. And show him the path of all your righteously guided prophets and messengers from the past. Oh Allah, I ask you, Allah, please have mercy on us and forgive us. And please show him the way and show us all the way of the truth, Allah. Indeed, there is one truth, Allah, and guide him towards that truth, oh Allah. We refer to you with no partners, Allah. We do not do any shirk with you whatsoever, Allah. We, we worship you one and alone, Allah, and we believe in you alone, Allah. You have no partners whatsoever, Allah. Allah, we pray to you alone. We do not pray through anyone or anything, Allah. Please, indeed, Allah, if this person is indeed sincere in your worship and in your guidance, Allah, please guide him to the truth. Allahumma ameen. My brother, it was beautiful talking to you. Wonderful God bless you, Anthony. You. Okay? You SQ. SQ. Oh, SQ. I'll be praying for you. Yes, sir. Yes. Sister, thank you. That was a long conversation. Thank you so much, friend. Thank you guys, take care.